All right, hi everyone, welcome back to the Odin series. Uh, sorry for the hiatus. So today we're going to cover threading. So threading is not too simple in uh, in Odin. The main thing is it's kind of low level. You normally have to kind of create things yourself. Uh, I don't believe there are any mutexes in the core library. Could be wrong, I'm not sure. I didn't find any. Um, but yeah, it's been a while since I actually wrote this code, so I'm trying to remember how it actually works. So basically I'll show you the, uh, so I have, it's a very, very simple example. And generally the problem with uh, creating a threaded example is threading needs to be very, very complicated and computationally heavy, or it needs to require threading in some way. So say for example, you have, I don't know, it's like a computer, it's like a video game where you have the UI and then you have the computer doing something like, you know, maybe moving some AI, working out pathfinding, but you want to have them on separate threads because you don't want the game to just freeze while the AI is pathfinding. So that's a reason to do it. Or it could be on a network server where you uh, have one thread waiting for a response of another server that obviously needs to be threaded. Otherwise the website will just lock up. And But generally in like um, like console applications, it's not normally needed unless, unless you have something that takes a really long time and will actually benefit from threading. This isn't one of those situations where it can benefit. So I just took from, from Wikipedia some descriptions of some colors and made an array of them called strings. And we are simply just going to count the amount of vowels inside it and show the result. That's literally all we're going to do. Uh, and there are seven of them. So in one situation, we're going to run it procedurally, one after the other, count it, show the time, and then we're going to run it threaded seven at a time and then compare them. Spoilers, it's slower to use it to make it threaded. Uh, anyway, so I'll show you the unthreaded version. Uh, the language server just doesn't work at the moment. I don't know why. So I can't click anything. It doesn't work. I have to go all the way manually to threaded. So we create a timer. We just literally go to this function count vowels. So we go to hit count vowels, which literally just uh, gets the length of the string inputted. Uh, if it's zero, we return zero. So it's just, yeah, just returning an integer. And that's all it is. So it, call, so it calls isVal, which is a very, very simple function. It's simply just, is it a vowel or not? Very simple. And then just adds the count. Well, add, index is very different, but um, yeah, so this is basically like a kind of for loop. It's like a while loop, like a for loop. So I'm incrementing the index here and not inside here, which you could do, but anyway, just simpler to write this way. Uh, but yeah, so basically, is it a vowel? If it is, you increase the count and then just return the count at the end. That's what we do, and then we stop it, and then just print the result. Uh, for some reason, the result is printing it in a weird format, um, which I'll show at the end. But anyway, so that's the unthreaded version. Uh, let's close, close everything. Okay, then we have the threaded version. The threaded version is an unsafe version. I'll show you why at the end. Uh, so f here, yeah, we do exactly the same thing. We have the global count val count, which is a global variable, which is a bad thing to do. <laughs> Uh, so we have a global variable val count and then we have thread pool we create a thread pool so we create a dynamic array of threads and this is thread.thread .thread. so here we have a thread struct inside thread.odin which is in the core library and thread has uh, it's a, a struct with lots of stuff it has like uh, has in the init context create allocator creation allocator user arguments you can pass things to it user index raw data so you can pass things to it like that more about that later. We delete the thread pool with a defer at the end of the scope, so it's cleaned. Um, yeah, and then we basically we loop through seven times, and we go. This thread is a pointer to a thread dot thread, and we thread dot create, and we pass in the function we want to, to use, which is here count vowels threaded, which I'll show you. This is count vowels threaded which is almost exactly the same, I believe. I'm not sure if there's any difference. Just have a look. Yeah, so we use the, actually we use the index inside the thread. So we set the index, and we set the index here, user index, which is this uh, int here. So we set that index to i, and then pass it to this function. So we're basically, we the, the string we're using is the index of this array. So say so if it's like the first thread, it'd be zero, then it'd be one, two, three, that's basically all we're doing. And I believe everything else is exactly the same. There's no difference here at all. No, I don't see any difference, it's exactly the same. 
Uh, so yeah, we create the context. So the context is basically, I believe, for allocating. We don't do any allocating here, so it's not that important. But uh, if you want to like pass this, uh, you can pass a different context, I believe. But context is normally about allocators. That's what it's normally there for in Odin. Um, so we're just setting it to this. I'm not sure if you need to do this in this situation, but I'll just do it anyway. Uh, we append, so we're, we're adding it to the thread pool. We add it to the thread pool and then we start it. So creating it doesn't start it. Start starts it. So thread.start, this thread. And then we increase the index because we're looping through. We don't want an infinite loop. Uh, then what do we do here? We thread count length. Yeah, we're basically just waiting for the thread. So this is basically async await, I guess. We say, is it done? <laughs> so we, we loop through all the threads. Um, and then we see if the count we get the count each time because we need to because it will update every time um, I is zero we basically just loop through and see if they're all done if they're all done we stop and then we show the result now the problem is generally creating threads creates overhead you have to create the thread and then you have to clear the thread and then you have to check if the thread is done this can take time and it can create overhead which is generally why uh, um, threading is slower uh, the reason why this is unreliable is because it creates a race condition. So if you see here, where are we? Um, in here, we we simply go uh, global val val count plus equals one. This can create a race condition. So say, for example, two threads try to increment the val count at the same time. It can it can basically stop the other thread from from changing the value and create a race condition. So basically, sometimes it will be incorrect. Sometimes it will be correct. It just depends on the situation, um, which is why you shouldn't use global variables, and which is why I created another example. Um, so here, it literally just this is uh, simply creating the thread, starting it. And this is um, checking if it's done. If it is done, remove it. That's basically all we're doing. And then we print the result. And then we have the safer alternative to threaded. We have threaded data. So we are, yeah, total val count is the, it's basically a local variable now, not a global variable. Uh, then we have counts. So we create a, an, a slice of counts. I'm not sure if it needs to be a, uh, like, cause make, I believe will make it on the, on the heap. But anyway, it's probably safest to do that cause it's uh, dynamic, but you don't necessarily need to, if you're not going to add more than seven, but I just made it a, uh, on the heap here anyway. So we do exactly the same thing. We create a thread pool, we create, but instead we create the counts. And then we, um, do exactly the same as before, but we're using count val dot threaded, not threaded data, not count val threaded. Which I believe is exactly the same, except for we use a pointer to count, and we have to. This line I don't really actually understand. I don't remember where I found this. To be honest, I'm trying to because I, I wrote this code like a few weeks ago, trying to work this out. Um, so basically, we have a pointer to an integer, which is data. Ah, I think I I think I remember now. So basically, data is you can pass. It's a raw pointer. A raw pointer is anything. So it's basically like generic. It could be anything. Uh, user supplied integer that will be available to the thread once it's started. Should be set after the, is this for data or? Sorry, this is this one, uh, this one. User supplied pointer that will be available to the thread once it is started. Should be set after the thread has been created, but before it is started, okay? So basically this is anything you wanna to pass to the, to the thread and it's generic. But because it's generic, we have to do this transmute, which is basically like converting it into what we want. Because it's basically just binary data, zeros and ones. You have to tell it what it is. And it's an int, so we transmute it into a pointer to an int. Kind of confusing, which is why, again, threading is kind of not really beginner friendly. So we yeah, so we convert it into a into an integer, and it's basically a, a pointer. So we we're pointing to the data, and then we increment that data. So this is thread safe because it's it's basically individual to each thread. It's not a global variable that can cause race conditions. That's why this is a lot safer. So I show you here, for example, uh, yeah, data equals at counts. So we're actually we we are actually sending a pointer to the counts. Uh, which is why I believe I made it. I'm not sure if you need to make it on the heap, but it's probably safer to make it on the heap. 
Anyway, you could make it local. It's not really because it's still in scope. Anyway, I'm kind of waffling. Doesn't matter. So basically, we pass a pointer to the counts based on the index we're on. So basically, every time we use data, which is count here, which is linking to the data, it's just a pointer to the array we created, and this is thread safe. Uh, then we yeah we do exactly the same thing as before, and this is exactly the same. It's literally exactly the same. We loop through and make sure they're done. And then we add the totals at the end. So before counting counts, these are integers, we add the counts, and that's all. And then we print the uh, the results. So I'll just show you the results quickly. So I edited the code a bit because I was getting some weird output. Uh, so basically, if I run this now, go out and run, uh, we'll see the results. So we have 2779, and then we have 2769, why race conditions we're using the set we don't have a mutex um and then we have the correct result here but you can see here 98,900 nanoseconds 439,000 nanoseconds and 340 nanoseconds basically this isn't a uh this isn't a situation really appropriate for threading but that's kind of irrelevant i'm just trying to show how it works uh but basically, yeah, race conditions. You don't want to use a global variable. You want to try to use um, you want to try to use data, right? So I'm not exactly like I, I, you know, I can't claim to be an expert at all on how this works. So basically, you have thread, thread dot thread. It's a pointer to a thread when you create it. Yeah, so it's a pointer to a thread. So we create a dynamic array of threads. We create them like this, passing in the uh, count val thread of data. I don't believe you can pass parameters to the uh the, the um for example here yeah so sorry i, I met for us i mentioned something you have to actually pass the thread as a as a parameter but nothing else so you can't pass anything else to it you can't pass the string to it you put the string inside the struct or you make it global in this situation i made it global i'm not sure if i could like in theory if i go to thread sorry if i go to thread and put it in data or something I don't think you can. Maybe you can put it in user arguments. I don't know. They're, threads, like, there's almost nothing on the Odin website that really explains this stuff. So it's kind of hard to actually find information. Uh, you kind of have to look for other people's information. But it's, it's really basically, Odin is just like, Odin website, if it's not there, good luck. That, that's basically how it is, which is kind of the problem. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. It, I don't think you can pass parameters to the, the function. It has to basically just have the thread and that's it. There, yeah. So yeah, if you want to check a thread pool if they're done, like a async await or something like this, you'd have to just loop through it and then check if it's done using is done. If it isn't, then yeah, that's basically it. Uh, but again, generally threading needs to be a very, very CPU intensive thing that isn't, which doesn't need to be, you know, say if the first thing is dependent on the second thing, no. So if the second thing is dependent on the first thing, you can't obviously make it threaded. But anyway, um, so I might make future videos about this if I find out more information. For now, this is all I could really find. But anyway, yeah, so threads are pretty complicated, <laughs> as you can see by my uh, confusion. But anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you guys next time.